In this video, we're going to talk about rounding. Specifically, our objective, we want to round a number to a specified place. Okay, what do we come into this video already knowing? Well, we know what place value is. Place value is the value of where a digit is in the number. And it's determined by where the number is in relationship to the decimal point. Okay, so as you go to the left of the decimal point, the first place is the ones place, also called the units place. And then you go to the tens place, the hundreds place. In other words, the three and the hundreds place means that this number's value is 300. Continuing left, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, ten millions, hundred millions, billions, etc. Starting from the decimal point and moving right, we get into the THSs. Okay, the first place value to the right of the decimal point is the tenths. So the one in the tenths place, the value of this one is one tenth. The four is the hundredths. And then you have the thousandths, the ten thousandths, etc. Okay, and again, note that the ones place, we don't often say round the nearest one. It's usually round to the nearest unit, or as we'll see later, round to the nearest dollar, round to the nearest pound, round to the nearest inch, etc. So how do we round numbers? Well, here's the procedure that I'm sure you've seen, uh, I'm sure you've seen before. You begin by underlining the digit that occupies the rounding place. Okay, you're, you're told to round to the nearest thousand, for example. So you'll underline the digit that occupies the thousand place. And then you look at the digit to the immediate right of that rounding place. If the digit to the right is five or greater, you add one to the digit in the rounding place, and then you replace all digits to the right with zeros. If the digit to the right is less than five, you do not change the digit in the rounding place. And again, you then replace all digits to the right with zeros. Let's do some examples to see how this works. Okay, let's make sure I, you can see my paper. There we go. Okay, given the number 96,184 and 207 thousandths, rounded the t to the nearest hundredth. Okay, well, let's see. I'm going to write the number. So 96,184 and 207 thousandths. The nearest hundredth. Well, this is the hundredth place right here where the zero is. Remember, to the right of the decimal, tenths and then hundredths. Okay, so we underline the hundredths place. We look to the right and we see a seven. The seven is five or greater, so that means that this zero becomes a one, and then everything after the zero, after the, after the one, excuse me, is replaced with a zero. So this becomes, to the nearest hundredth, 96,184 and 21 hundredths. Now, we can put the zero here if you want. There's a zero. But as we know, when you're in the very back after a decimal, these zeros are unnecessary. And normally, when it says round to the hundredth, you should stop at the hundredth place. There's no reason to go to the thousandth place when you want to round to the hundredth. Okay, the next one. Let's round the same number to the nearest thousand. Okay, so 96,000. 184 and 207 thousandths. The thousand place is the six. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. We look to so underline the six. We look to the right. The number, the digit one here is less than five. So the six does not change. And then all of these after become zeros. 
Okay, so the nearest thousand is 96,000 exactly. And again, I'm putting all the zeros in, but these zeros matter because these zeros are what make this six a thousand, but the zeros after the decimal place in this case are, don't add any meaning to it. So here is the number rounded to the nearest thousand. Okay, last but not least, how about round to the near, not last, we got one more. How about round to the nearest tenth? Okay, 96,184 and 207 thousandths. The tenths place is the two. Okay, we'll uh, look to the right and we'll see a zero. The zero is less than five, so the two does not change. Everything after the two becomes a zero. And to the nearest tenth, 96,184 and two tenths. Again, these extra zeros, it makes sense. We want to stop at the tenths place here. The last example is where most people get a little confused. We never say round to the nearest one, round the nearest ones. Okay, that's, I don't think I've ever heard that, round the nearest ones. You do, you do hear round to the nearest unit, round to the nearest whole number. Uh, also, because it's the unit, you might hear it stated as round to the nearest dollar if this number is in dollars, round to the nearest pound if the number is in pounds. If it's a percent, round to the nearest percent. If it's miles, round to the nearest mile. All of those are speaking to this one's place or this unit's place. So let's, we'll, we'll play, we'll, 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 uh, we'll pretend that our number here is pounds. So 96,184 and 207 thousandths pounds, okay? So now the number has context. And again, no one's gonna say round to the nearest ones. Okay, what they're gonna say in this case, because the number has context, round to the nearest pound. Well, then this is the units place. In this case, the units are pounds. So this is what we're looking at right here, okay? Now, again, that the procedure at this point is the same. Underline the place, look to the right. The two here again is less than five. So the four does not change. Everything after the four becomes zeros. Note these zeros again are after the decimal point, so we don't have to write them. And to the nearest pound, this, excuse me, this number is 96,000. 184 pounds, okay? So we want a whole number, 96, 184. We're looking for a whole number in these cases. And again, this is where people trip up. So the, near, the, the nearest ones uh, is, almost, is never described that way. It always has to do with the unit you're talking about. And when that's the case, when you're dealing with round to a nearest unit, you want to be looking at the one's place to determine what to round to.